excuse me. There was no um, uh, actor or actress or character in this movie that bothered me. Right. Um, other than other than Alec, who very much bothered me a lot. Yeah. The the scenes that I laughed at in this movie were all Reggie scenes. There's a couple great moments. He's a he's attacked in the cemetery. <laughs> the poorly made out cemetery. <laughs> so that's another thing in, in horror movies. The creepiest cemeteries in the world. Whoever whoever plans cemeteries for horror movies um, does not have what do you call them? Chop lines. Yeah, they yeah, it's <laughs> they just like let's just put them over there. That they just like uh, chuck a body that somewhere the crucifix delivery man shows up and he's like, hey, where would you like these crucifixes? And, and the guy just in charge of it, over there and the guy in there. charge of it is like, what is it on, like a dump, uh, like a dump cart? Like, can you just dump it out on the ground? And he's like, well, yeah, but if you would like it, like, just dump it. Just, just, just crap all over this place. You know, there's just, just crucifixes. There was more crucifixes in this movie than I ever seen in any movie. Yeah. This movie was cruel, simple, addicted. It, they, were, they were everywhere, and they didn't do any good. <laughs> You're like, the fucking cross is everywhere. Yeah, he just, he just says the, the townsfolk says that the crosses in the cemetery around keep the evil in, not out. But obviously not. Yeah. At least in the cemetery. Yeah. So anyways, the, the moment that I loved is Frenchie is getting attacked by Malak. And it's in the graveyard. Scared to death. And the <laughs> at some point he picks up one of these crosses from the graveyard. And so yeah. Yeah comically large cross and he just, just starts slowly backing out of the cemetery. <laughs> yeah, he grabs somebody, he's essentially someone's headstone, but it's it's made of wood and he just like backs out. He's like, fuck this place, I got it. I got me a cross, I'm out. And it's so great. I mean not really think of it, that is so great that it could be improvised. Yeah. If he was in the scene, just take one of these props. I mean if you think about that's shocking how easy it would be for him to just take one of these grave markers. Yeah. They're, you know, supposed to be permanent. Nothing in this place was terribly permanent. But yeah, they are supposed to be. And yeah. And, they, and it was hilarious. It worked very well. Right. And, you know, I should mention, so I, I did go see this with my brother. And, and, and I love watching movies with my brother because he, uh, he, he's constantly evaluating every action based on how he would react, which is how he would do it, which is, I mean, to be honest, is how, it's, it's kind of how I watch movies as well, but with him, it's, it's all vocalized, so, so he's like, what, you saw a creepy person down there. Too early, you man. saw a scary thing. Why are you going that way? And this movie was just laden with that shit. It was, it was a lot of very obvious pulls for the characters, right? It's like here's a fish hook, bite it, and then they bite it, and then they're dragged slowly towards whatever the spooky thing is. And like, don't, don't go down there. Don't go down there. Yeah, you could just avoid this whole thing if you just didn't do that. Yeah. For example. Throughout most of the movie, they're all separate. In the Frenchie, the priest, and, and Sister Irene yeah. are separate. And then it's another point. one. But it's like, don't separate. Yeah, they, they eventually get all together and they. Okay, stronger together. Now we can face this. And they have a couple scenes where they're joining together and experiencing all the happenings and helping each other. And then. In true horror movie fashion, when they go down to the creepiest part of, of the uh, the cross basement and try, are trying to come and confront Wallach, just inexplicably they're separated. Quick, we must split up. <laughs> it has to. 
If we don't split up now, when will we split up? They don't even bother giving a reason for why they split up. They just at some point they split up. It's just and and, and it's like and it's it's just bye Felicia. They just walk away. They just walk away from each other. And you go, hey, no. Yeah. What are you doing? This is the scariest part of the place. And they're like, all right, well I'm gonna go this. They don't even say I'm gonna go this way. They just walk away from each other. <laughs> On screen, walk away from each other. It's like, what? Hey! It's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's an interesting tactic because the, the alternative is the horror movie trope of we gotta split up so we can find it quicker. Yeah, it's better that they didn't say, let's split up now. Which is surprising that they did because there's several of those types of lines. There's a line by Sister Irene where she says, Oh, we need to find the portal and seal it. <laughs> it was like, okay, it, we, we're on board. You've moved it along quite sufficient, right? <laughs> I imagine James Wan, while he's writing the script of this, just saying, how can I get them to convey that they need to find the portal and seal it. I know. I'll have her say, we need to find the portal and seal it. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Way to go. So, uh, yeah, um, a, a, a little bit of backstory. So the, the sister Irene and father, what was the father? <laughs> father Burke is called by the Vatican to take sister Irene with him he is told she's familiar with the territory and then he meets sister irene and he says they said you're familiar with the territory you've been to romania much she's like nah dog i've never been there bro and then instead of asking a follow-up question like what do you think they meant by that he's just he's like, like i'm sure they know it's, you know, the Vatican doesn't make mistakes. God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I mean, he, he basically says, well, the Vatican has its reasons for everything that it does, so I'm sure that you'll be useful. All right, so that's the extent of your conversation. Let's go. Time to go to Romania, <laughs> which is no small, small undertaking. It's like several plane rides, and then a horse-drawn carriage ride, and then a good hike. <laughs> And then, then you're in hell. <laughs> um, okay, so they get to the convent. They're greeted by a super creepy and croaky mother superior that you can't see her face at all or anything because she like, covered. That was effective. She was upset. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't like being around her. I didn't like the feel that she was just places there. You know, that she was just kind of there. And like they'd, they'd be walking through someplace being like, hello? Hey, hello? Is anybody here? Anybody? And then they just keep walking and then she'd be like, hey. Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the mother superior that was outside the gate to greet them, or she was just in some kind of weird throne chair. Yeah. Facing the door, like not even not even facing out, yeah, facing like, inward towards the inside. Side. So they, have, they are past her, and then she's like, Who knows I'm like, oh god. Jesus. <laughs> we don't need you here to the bag. Everything's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs>
almost immediately they get attacked by the demon. Father Bird. This is this is confusing to me. So Father Bird he has a backstory in there, which yeah. is Father Burke has a backstory, which is in uh so he is part of a small group of miracle finders for the Vatican, which is kind of another way of saying a guy who performs exorcisms and you know, seeks out weird shit and then, you know, helps uh, uncover it for the church. And um, so in a previous uh, experience, one of his earlier experiences uh, in doing so, he comes across a, a uh, boy who he determines to be possessed. And then he exercises him and uh, ends up uh, sustaining too much trauma during the exorcism and dies a few days later. Well, this boy comes back in this movie to haunt him, which I don't know why. Why he does that? Well, in the end, it's just Baba using their own fears against them. Okay, so this this. So then, in that case, this is starting to make sense, because in The Conjuring 2, Valak used the Crooked Man to, who is another kind of like spirit, as like a, uh, as like a, um, uh, what do you, you call something that is, that, like a scapegoat, right? And he, he, he uses the Crooked Man to essentially tr try and consolidate his power or to, to some effect. And in this movie, he kind of does the same thing with uh, this boy who is doing an exercise. Like, I think the priest believes that it's, that he's at least partially fighting, you know, whatever demon possessed this boy. Right. Or he's led, he's, yeah, he's uh, led into it deeper by visions. So when they're sleeping, Father Bird wakes up and he sees the, this ghost of the kid that he exercised and killed accidentally. He falls it after the graveyard and then he gets buried alive. And it's inexplicably buried. Yeah, it was. <laughs> he, he gets scared, falls into a grave, and now it's covered with dirt and grass instantly. Yeah. And it was very confusing because it was a surreal moment where, yes, all of a sudden it is completely covered with ground and turf, like it wasn't disturbed at all. And then, the, then Sister Irene wakes up. So to me, I was. It's magic. It's magic. Well, I was thinking, oh, it's her dream. Because if there's a hard cut to her waking up, I it's, was like, oh. It is definitely she's just having a vision because she's a visionary. And then she goes out and, no, he's actually very alive. Yeah, it's actually happening. It is a jarring part of the movie. It is, it is jarring because it's... It, there, there might be a better way to do that, right? There might be a better way to, to, to execute his <laughs> Oh my yeah, god, y'all choking <laughs> hard right now. There might be a better way to do it. Right, if they had not, so this is the better way. If they had not shown it before she woke up, if it showed him falling into the grave and it, the lid shutting, hard cut to her waking up, then it would be like, oh, she's just waking up and this has happened. Mm -hmm. And then when she shows up, the bell is ringing, the, the plague bell is ringing. You know, like, what the fuck, it's, it's completely covered, how did that happen? Yes. That would have been more effective. Yes, it would have. And then afterwards, had they addressed, had she been like, well, how did you get in this grave? The, 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 you know, the dirt, the soil wasn't, wasn't like, fresh. it was, it was covered over with grass, it's not, like, it, you know, it, it wasn't fresh. And it's like, if he had said something to the effect of, oh, the evil here is strong, or the magic behind the, you know, then I it wouldn't have been quite so trying. But it was, it was a part of the movie that, that I, <laughs> um, in terms of tactics, I don't think Balak was thinking very hard when he throws the priest into the one coffin that contains the evil volumes yeah. that describe how the history of the coffin, <laughs> or the history of Balak himself. Yeah. So when he gets out of the grave, he looks back and there's the skeleton holding, you know, the, the creepy two volumes of demonic literature or whatever. It's almost as if The Rock wanted to progress the story of the movie more than he wanted to possess people. The Rock is concerned about the viewers, above all. Above all. Um, 
So what's, what's,